you would, everyone is, of course, very welcome to our meeting. Uh, I want to speak about some um, net quiz uh, aspects which we, we have for our meetings here in Blarney. Uh, I suppose we ask, if possible, for all of our attendees to keep the, their cameras on for the duration of the meeting. Um, the body language, the smiles, the claps, and the warmth that, that um, our speakers observe on the camera, of course, helps uh, our speakers in their performances. So please keep your cameras on if possible. Also, when you're not speaking, if you could kindly uh, keep your, your camera or your computer on mute, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and I hope everyone has a fantastic meeting in this red letter day for the Blarney Toastmasters Club. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to hand everyone over to our absolutely fantastic uh, president, uh, our great leader, the one and only Lillian Corty. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you so much, Dennis. And I know you're going to have a very, very interesting meeting tonight. So fellow Toastmasters and honourable guests, I welcome you to our thousand cele celebration tonight since uh, we began. So our word tonight, which is unbelievable, is uh, the word celebrate, to celebrate. And that's one thing that we're actually doing tonight. So my speech tonight is I want to introduce you to what Toastmasters is about, where we came from, who are we? Because in a lot of cases, we stick with our own club and we know exactly where we came from. But I just want to remind you where we actually did originate from. So Toastmasters officially began their first meeting in the number one club in Santa Ana in California in October 24th, 1924. At the third meeting, things seemed to began, begin to get very, very busy so they decided to come up with a name called Toastmasters Club. And the club was founded by Dr. Ralph Smithley. Uh, he was uh, actually the general secretary at the time of the YMCA. So in 1926, another club was set up in California. So in 1930, they decided, hold on a minute, this is really beginning to be very interesting. So, I, so they decided to call it Toastmasters International. And in 1935, the first Toastmasters Club outside the United States was chartered in Victoria. And in July of the same year, the district organization was instituted into Southern California. So in, I will continue this year, next year, Toastmasters International will be 200, or well, sorry, 100 years old. And in 1972, District 71, us, was constituted. And in 1973, would you believe it? It was the first year that women were allowed into the organization. So fellow Toastmasters, I stand here and sit here, well sit here, in front of all of you, on the shoulders of all these presidents who came before me. And I am literally on a high tonight wearing this and all these people that actually really, not only them, but all the teams and all the roles that the officers have taken to get to where we are today, to this thousand meeting and to the very beginning since we, since night, since we took over in Ireland. Now, Blarney was founded in 1974 but it wasn't chartered until 1975. And it was founded by Patrick Bacchick, B-A-C-I-K-S. And the first president here was Brendan Mee. And our mission statement, I want to read it out. Our mission statement, we provide supportive and positive learning experience for each member. And as you know, we have so many delegates here tonight. I will, I can't mention them all. And I'm so honored that all of you are here tonight with us. Beyond presidents, we have area directors, district directors, and like we have higher all the delegates and royalties among us tonight. We empower to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in great 
self-confidence and self-growth. What do I think of Blarney? Why did I join Blarney Toastmasters? I joined because I was under pressure from Maura. <laughs> no, I joined actually because Maura O'Brien kept telling me how amazing it was and how it would help me in my business as a coach and a speaker. And after seven years, I actually decided to join. And I'll tell you, I am saying to myself, why hadn't I joined before that? The topics, table topics alone, they help me literally when I meet someone outside, it doesn't matter what topic they bring up, I can actually come up with something to say in a few seconds. And this is because of Toastmasters. Why also has it helped me? It has helped me to be more assertive. Why? Because of the evaluations. When before I was a wishy-washy person, because I was a too nice, I would be afraid to give an evaluation to, in case I hurt someone. But now I'm able to say, right, this is what you, I feel you did right. These are my recommendations. And, and I'll always finish with something, obviously, that I feel they did amazingly. So Toastmasters is such a club that I feel like, especially Blarney, we had our ex-president, Paul O'Mahony, and who actually keeps such a standard, he reminds me of a, a headmaster from Christians. <laughs> but genuinely, he, whatever way he has, he has this way of telling you, you you're just thrown into the deep end. Right, you're this person, you're that person, I need this done, I need this done. And I genuinely feel anybody that's new here and that wants, that has taken up a role or what happens is that you actually only know the role when you're leaving. And think about that when you're VPE, the day you leave, the day I left VPE, I was saying, oh my God, was that what that was about? And it's, it's everything to do with communication, leadership skills. So as I stand here as president for 2023, 2024, I am here to help anybody and to bring us up to President Distinguished and keep the level of all of us and Blarney Toastmasters up. I hand you back to our Toastmaster for tonight, Paul O'Mahony. Thank you. Madam President, you're a superstar, a superstar. And thank you very much for that introduction. As uh, Lillian said, I am your host, your MC, your Toastmaster for the evening. And we have a sumptuous feast for you because you have brought yourselves here and just think about this small little club in Cork. Admittedly, we've been here for a long time, 1975. Admittedly, a lot of people have passed through the club, but we're still a small little club. And if I tell you that every one of our active members are here tonight, every single one, 100%, that is... Uh, absolutely terrific now my job as mc is to introduce you to the agenda i put it in the chat and i will put it in the chat late, uh, fairly soon but we have an extraordinary agenda because we have seven uh, prepared speakers now three of them are going to be evaluated i hope ann fallow won't mind if we arrange an evaluator for her but we have here this evening, we have our area director. And I'm going to ask Moira O'Brien to spotlight our area director and to spotlight the people that I named, Jack, if that's not too much to ask. But Shirley Gallagher, our area director, is here and she will be speaking fairly soon. Our division director, Eric Downey will be speaking again fairly soon. Before that, we will have Moira O'Brien, 
who's one of our club members, who will give a speech. Later then we will have Bill Hayden, one of our members, giving a speech. And then after our area director, our division director, we have representing our district leadership team, Danny Banks, Program Quality Director, District 71. Danny Banks. Welcome, Danny. Welcome, Danny. And we then have a very special guest to the club, Anne Fallow. Anne Fallow is going to give a speech as well. Welcome, Anne. And then we will have our past, the one Irish past international president of Toastmasters International, Ted Cochran, who will also be here. So we try to get, and among you all, we have people from all over the world, and we have also received lots of messages to them. And you know what it's like. Do you, any of you remember in the old days at a wedding when there used to be telegrams read out? Can I see some nods? Do any of you remember telegrams? Were any of you married with telegrams being read out? Uh, you don't have to admit to being married, but uh, if any of you were married, telegrams. So I have telegrams here and uh, we have had lots of them. So I will be reading them in between, but we have one other hero of the night. We have, as Lillian has mentioned, our Farmer of the Year. Blarney Farmer of the Year, the one and only Charles Malone. He will be the topics director for the evening. And the second half of the meeting, as is uh, tradition in Blarney, welcome Charles, great to see you. The second half of the meeting here will be handed over to a visiting general evaluator. Could we please have Jill, to see desperately hoping not to embarrass himself by forgetting that is Jill Talmer. Jill Talmer all the way from New York, you're terribly welcome. Visiting general evaluator, a tradition that this club has to have visiting general evaluators. And we, now look, what I'm going to do is start off by telling you that we've had a message here from Beverly Wise, the president of Excalibur Toastmasters in District 91. And these are all going to be read onto the record. This, this recording is going to be public, not just for our own members, it's going to be made public. So uh, District 71, Beverly Wise says, the members of Excalibur, Raise, she's the president, the members of Excalibur raise a glass to Blarney Toastmasters on their milestone, 1,000 meetings. Question mark, I don't know why she put a question mark in. And now that's a lot of Blarney. Genesis Club, over there in District 81, Helen Gomez and Gracie Walton, who comes, who's in that club from Indonesia says, well, we've had a poster sent. And the poster says, wonderful congratulations to Blarney Toastmasters. I have attended. I would have attended if it wasn't so late. She's talking from Indonesia. Congratulations on the long run, Blarney Toastmasters. You should invite us to come to your meetings more often so we can learn the secrets of Blarney's longevity. Now, isn't that nice? You are all allowed to smile. You are all allowed to wave your hands. And I'm now going to introduce to you the, the people who are going to help run the meeting. We have a timer. Can we have Wukash? Uh, Good evening. Hi. Are you there, timer? I'm here. Lovely. Now, when, I when you finish introducing yourself, will you mind uh, getting yourself uh, transferred up to the top left-hand corner. You have to, to do that. You have to press the reactions button and, and, uh, and tap on there. But Wukash, why do we have a, to a timer in Toastmasters and how are you going to do the job, please? Good evening. Good, good evening, fellow Toastmaster, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you for having me today. When we discussed my, particip my, my participation in today's meeting, with Paul 
uh, he asked me if I could be the timer and I said I'd love to. He never mentioned though that there's seven speeches to be timed today. So it's a busy, busy day. Um, I'll be helping people out with the timings of their speeches. I have those little placards here indicating three different colors. If you look at the agenda, each one of the, meet, the speeches has time assigned to it. And I'll basically respect, respectively to each one of the speeches, I'll mark what time, how much time they have left basically. So um, that's my role. Uh, Wukash, before you finish, will you be signaling to the speakers in any way? I will, as per the three placards that I indicated here. Hopefully people can see that we have the red, we have the warning yellow, and we have green. So we'll start with green, then we go with yellow and then red. I tell you what, we might get you an, an assistant timer who will just show the lights and you record the... Uh, the times so that that will stand out in the crowd is that okay with you sounds good sounds good yeah we'll do we'll do that now next all the way well from ireland but from ukraine i want to introduce you to our member from ukraine who's roman roman you are our r counter why do we have an r counter and how are you going to play the role <laughs> uh thank you mr toastmaster for Introducing me, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. My role for this meeting is the accounter. The purpose of this role is to note words and sounds that are used as a crutch or pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, well, but, so, and you know, and I will also listen for filler sounds, including R, um, and er. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, or this means, this means. And at, at the end of the meeting, I will report the number of time uh, that each speaker used these expressions. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, fabulous. Give him huge applause. Brilliant stuff. I can tell you that man's English has improved astronomically since he joined the club. Wukash, or uh, Roman, thank you ever so much. Now, our next role player is the grammarian. And here's where Paul admits to everybody that he's made a mistake in all the juggling of the agenda together. Paul thought one person was a grammarian and then he thought another person was the grammarian. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask somebody privately in the chat to be the grammarian. And I know that if I ask you all who'd like to be the grammarian, none of you will put yourself forward because you're all so modest and you don't want to grab the role. So I'm going to ask somebody. But the word of the day is celebrate. And the grammarian is going to count the number of times that word is used. But the grammarian is also going to take a note of all the bad language you use. If there's any swearing at this meeting, the grammarian will make a note of it and report later. Otherwise, the grammarian's role, quite honestly, is to help everybody to use the best quality way of expressing yourself to get your point across. So having made that admission, Paul will correct it in the background. So let us now move on because our first speaker is going to be evaluated by Andy Rigi. Andy, are you here? Are you yes, here, Andy Rigi? Hello, everybody. There are Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and very welcome guest. Uh, it's a great honor for me to evaluate and um, Toastmaster, I really look up at, and she's a distinct, distinguished Toastmaster and a very active member of Blarney, but also of the wider Toastmaster community. She She's the treasurer at the moment at Blarney and also a sustainable speakers in District 91. And, uh, She's also a podcaster, so her her speech is uh, a speech from the 
uh, engaging humor pathway and is the first speech of the level three. And the goal is gonna be express a point of view and uh, at the same time, include some anecdotes or some storytelling in a way of making, of adding some humor to the speech. And I really love the title of the speech, which is, is humor a funny thing? It's very thought provoking. So please welcome our virtual stage with the title, is humor a funny thing? Mora O'Brien. Now be Mora O'Brien. Before Moira begins her speech, I've got something funny to say. The speech title has changed. It's out of the mouths of babes. Out of the mouths of babes. That is the lady. Now, Moira has special request. Will you all please unmute yourselves? She wants to speak, I'm guessing, the same way as it would be in a live room. So any of you who feel a need to cough during the speech, she has given permission. So Moira O'Brien, the speech now entitled, she has to unmute herself, of course, but uh, I hope you're all on mute. If I see Hannah Schmidt, can you unmute, please? Jill Talmer, would you please unmute? Ron Jones, will you please unmute? This is Donna, will you please unmute? That's a special request from Moira O'Brien. So, with the speech entitled, Out of the Mouth of Babes, Moira O'Brien. Out of the Mouth of Babes is an old saying representing the truths that can emanate from the mouths of the very young. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests from all over the world, there is something magical about the way that young and innocent children can come up with the cleverest things. It's one of the features that makes family so special for me. Hands up if you have children. Hands up if you ever were a child. <laughs> okay, you know exactly what I mean. My youngest son, Rupert, had his 53rd birthday yesterday. Oh. I know, you're thinking, Moira, okay. you're far too young to have a child of 53. And I would agree with you. <laughs> Shouldn't be <laughs> But when Rupert was four years old, like all children, he loved going to the toy shop. On one sunny afternoon, we went to visit our local like son. And Rupert saw a toy that he just had to have. Mummy, 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 please, please, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rupert, I just don't have enough money. A white lie, of course. You know the... He looked up at me with his big brown eyes and said, well, just go to the bank and buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> when I stopped laughing at his innocence and naivety, I realised then that in his mind, nothing was impossible. Maybe, just maybe, we could all learn a thing or two from the innocence of a child. You see, children look upon things from a completely different angle from the way that you and I do as adults. When you see something you really want, you stop and think, can I afford it? Where will I put it? Will it fit in the kitchen? <laughs> What will my husband say? Or <laughs> some such thoughts before you say, ah, to hell with that, as you whip out your credit card. I'm going to buy it anyway. The child just looks at it and says to itself, I want that. And it's up to us as adults to do all the thinking for them. 
after the mouths of babes. Of course, children can surprise us in other ways as well. Let me take you back to a small third floor apartment in Newman Street, just north of London's Oxford Street, sometime during the latter part of the 1940s, 1948 or 49. The lift never worked, so we always had to climb the stairs, all <laughs> 61 of them. I must have counted them a hundred times as a child, and probably <laughs> as an adult too. In this apartment, so conveniently situated in central London, lived my maiden aunt. To me, she was always old, but at that time she was in her late 40s or early 50s. Her name was Lena, but to the whole family, she was universally known, known as just Aunt. Aunt was a small woman with a tight curly gray hair and was always wearing glasses as her eyesight was uh, very poor. So much so that she was ever having to change her glasses from medium distance to reading glasses to distance glasses. <laughs> she never had the right glasses on. So as a result, her most often heard phrase was, Wait a minute, dear, let me change my glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a rite of passage for us children to go to Aunt for tea, where inevitably we would have ice cream and roll cake. But on this occasion, it was a bit of a gathering with my Aunt Doreen and her three children, as well as myself, my brother, and my sister. Someone suggested that we play a game of what you would do if you met a lion. Hmm. My brother Turner was the first to speak, saying, I would run away. Cousin Michael said, I would climb up a tree. David, the eldest of the cousins, who considered himself to be above all this silliness, said, I would ever allow myself to be in a position to meet a man. <laughs> that is to the cousins, Dermot, a future barrister and judge, no less, said that he had the perfect answer. I know what aunt would do. She'd say, wait a minute, dear, let me change my glasses. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, <laughs> if you viewed the world, you would see wonderful things. Now we just see worry and concern. Because out of the mouths of babes comes the magic of innocence. Now, before I end, I'd just like to say, as the longest standing member of Blindy Toastmasters, I'm absolutely overwhelmed to see the fantastic turnout at tonight's meeting, and I wish Lani Toastmasters another thousand successful years. Um, meetings. Well done, Moira. Moira, that 1,000 years has been recorded. <laughs> Superb stuff. Now, uh, you have one minute, please, to jot a few points to Moira in the uh, privately in the chat. So please do that. And I've had a couple of telegrams come in during this minute. And uh, one of them is from somebody in the room. And it says, looking forward to joining Blarney Toastmasters for your 1,000th meeting. If they were a currency, they would be a grand. <laughs> and I'm certain it will be a grand occasion. Many happy returns and congratulations to Blarney Toastmasters, its members and officers past and present, from all your friends and colleagues in Division B, B for Bertie, Division B, 
Kind regards, James Finnegan, Division B Director. The man is in the room. James, thank you so, so much. And another one here from somebody who isn't in the room, from John Alsop in the United Kingdom. I'm away this week and I'm not able to join you. Have a great celebration of a tremendous achievement. 1,000 meetings. And one more. And this one comes from International Director from Region 10, Jean Gamester. Many, many congratulations to Blarney Toastmasters on your 1,000th meeting. What a fantastic achievement. I can only imagine how many thousands of lives have been touched by your community over all these years. Here's to the next 1,000 meetings. Now, it gives me great pleasure to invite our new income, incoming, she's well in by now, area director, my great friend for many years in Cork, area 23 director, to give us a two to three minute speech entitled I support Blarney Toastmasters. Please put your hands together for Shirley Gallagher. I support Blarney Toastmasters. Shirley, the stage is yours. Thank you, Paul. Can everyone hear me okay? Because my, my uh, sound is glitching a little. So start me now. Coharges, or congratulations to all Blarney Club members. 1,000 meetings is a magnificent celebration. Madam President, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. Blarney is a serious Toastmaster club. Ignoring the school holidays. How could you? It is a serious club because it has been the go-to club to get advice, guidance and support since I have been in Toastmasters. My claim to fame is I introduced Paul and Moira to Toastmasters and they are powerhouses in District 71. And they are also the reason I am now area director. And I have two assistants, Moira's one of them and Shanine is also there and I'm really grateful for the support. Before I go into Blarney and the why, my role as your area director is to support you in your Toastmaster life. And by engaging in the area contest between Blarney, Cork and Douglas, and if anyone isn't in competition, please contact me. I leave my details in the chat. There are several rules that require filling. And the date for your diary, Thursday, the 26th of October at 7 p.m. I'll put that in the, in the chat as well. And I'm also planning speech craft at least twice during my tenure. And again, please get in contact. And we have set up a great formula. And it's one of the criteria for our Distinguished Toastmaster Award. So if anyone's thinking of that route, you can come. So I'm going to share the why, Paul, uh, on some ex-Blarney members because I've been engaged in Blarney for so long. Sharon O'Neill wrote the manual for Easy Speak. Mary Walsh guided us all through path Pathways. Many of the Blarney Club, including Moira and Paul, were involved in the, was it 2018 conference, Safe Haven, which was a great success in uh, Silver Springs. Ted mentored me in my first speech craft online in 2021. And it's the reason I now have co-founded a new online community club with many of our members hailing from Blarney. We meet next on Monday, the 21st of August at 1800 British summertime. And finally, Inga is now a stand-up comic roaming Europe 
making people laugh. Blarney Club has support, supported people. They are the reason why I support Blarney Toastmasters. Congratulations. Let's celebrate this milestone and here's to the next millennium. Now, aren't we fortunate to have Shirley Gallagher as our area director? Wouldn't you love to have an area director like that? Now, before I introduce our division director, Eric Downey, I just want to say a couple of things to those of you who are not yet members of Toastmasters, or even those of you who are here who never intend to become members of Toastmasters, but who will take the word out into the wider community. One club is grouped together with four, five, or six other clubs, and that's Shirley's area. But Cork has about 18 clubs in the county of Cork and four areas. And we have what's called a division director. The division's director's job is to support the area directors who support the club. So I, the person I'm going to introduce next is a very, very important strategic leader of Toastmasters in County Cork. Eric Downey, you have the stage. Why do you support Blarney Toastmasters? Please welcome Eric Downey. Thank you very much, Paul. And thank you for inviting me here tonight. And I would like to say to Madam President, congratulations on being present in the thousandth meeting and to all the Blarney Club members. Um, it is an honour to be here. What a milestone. The club is nearly 50 years old and, not, and you all look not a day over 35. Isn't it great? <laughs> but as regards the, um, the division director, um, I always try to compare the roles to the religious organisation that the, uh, the presidents of the club are like the parish priests in charge of the club. And then the area directors are the bishops. And then the division directors are the cardinals. And Elizabeth Jordan is the district director. So she's the pope, first female pope, I should say. So that's the breakdown. And we're all there to help each other. Blarney is especially a very good club because it is an international club. It's like the United Nations. The clubs, all these people from all around the world here tonight and a lot more would have joined if the time was right for their local area. I have been visiting Blarney Club since I joined Toastmasters in 2002 and always got a lovely welcome. And <clears throat> as personnel change from one year to the other, the club's ethos stays the same. Toastmasters is a, what I would call a cradle of confidence, where you come in, you're shy, you want to learn how to speak publicly without nerves and you come to an organization like Blarney Toastmasters and you are literally brought under the wing and given the confidence over time. And it's amazing to see year after year people come in and they're very shy and they won't talk and you have to guide them along. And then all of a sudden by the end of a year or a year and a half, you can't shut them up. And it's great to see that. And it's also a safe place for you to make mistakes. That's the whole point of Toastmasters. We're here to encourage not to give out to you. Even though we have evaluations, the evaluations are there to help. And fair play to Paul and the Blarney Club, because when COVID came around, they said, what are we going to do? A lot of clubs lost a lot of members. And they said, let's go online internationally. And look at us here today, 65 people are online. And even at that, I'm seeing pairs of people on the camera. Isn't it great? So my time is nearly up. I wish Larry's celebration every success, and I look forward to coming to future meetings. Thank you very much, everybody, for giving me this opportunity. And I give you my blessing in the name of the Father, Spittle to thank you. Eric Downey, Division Director Eric Downey, thank you very, very much for your words. Very, very welcome. 
they will all be included, by the way, I haven't told everybody, but there will be a book of this meeting. The meeting will be transcribed the, into a shareable PDF. So this will be perhaps a good example of how you can celebrate in your club when you reach a milestone. Now, let me just say that we've had a fantastic message from our local councillor in Blarney, the area of Blarney and Cork. Let me just read to you. This person is not in Toastmasters. This is a local political representative. My sincerest, this is from Councillor Damien Boylan. Councillor Damien Boylan. I see Eric nodding, he might know him. My sincerest congratulations to all involved in Blarney Toastmasters for reaching the incredible milestone of 1,000 meetings. Delighted to hear that you are now worldwide, thanks to the information superhighway. But let's not forget your roots. I do remember at a meeting in Christie's, that's a pub in uh, attached to a hotel in Blarney, being told by a member that the Blarney reference is not to your physical location as an organization, but to the level of conversation or Blarney involved in your meetings. As a Blarney man, I was happy to take whatever reference worked. I've been lucky enough to be in various organizations where members of Toastmasters were also members and stood in awe at the ease with which they could wax lyrical on any subject. You are an incredible organization who have done so much to help ordinary people become extraordinary. I'm sorry, I can't be with you, but I am delighted to congratulate you and wish you continued success. Warm regards, Councillor Damien Boylan. Isn't that fabulous? Damien, I hope you'll see this recording. Thank you very, very much. Our next speaker, our next prepared speaker, is going to be introduced by his evaluator, or his speech is going to be introduced by his evaluator. So, Ed O'Sullivan, you are going to evaluate Bill Hayden's speech. Ed O'Sullivan. Good afternoon, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and many, many guests. Particular welcome to our guests who have come to celebrate our millennial anniversary with us today. So Bill is going to give us a speech entitled, or titled, Why I Joined Blarney Toastmasters. Bill, we're very much looking forward to it. I will come back later when I'm called upon to give my evaluation. Over and to you, Bill. Thank you, Ed. Thank you ever so much. Before I uh, let Bill loose on you, can I say Bill, Bill is extraordinary. Uh, I'm going to tell you a very quick story about Bill. Bill uh, sent a message to Toastmasters International because he found the word Blarney when he was searching. He didn't had never been to Blarney. He just fancied the word and he fancied Ireland. So he put in find your club and he sent a message and uh, I got it. And uh, within a few minutes, Bill and I were uh, in touch with each other. So Bill uh, is very interested, comes along to the meeting, joins Blarney and happens to say at the beginning of the meeting, well, this was an online meeting. Well, of course, as soon as you have a meeting that's face to face, I'll be there. Little did Bill know that about 20 minutes later in the meeting, I announced that the next meeting of Blarney Toastmasters will be hybrid. It'll be held in my kitchen or in my house. Poor old Bill was then honor bound to go out, buy himself a plane ticket. Bill, I hope I'm not stealing your speech. Go, go and uh, go. <laughs> I've just suddenly realized I might be. <laughs> buy himself, I'll finish. Uh, buy himself a plane ticket and come to the house. Can you imagine? Flew in from. Well, across the Atlantic. Look, please put your hands together for none other than Bill Hayden. Why I joined Blarney Toastmasters. Bill Hayden, the floor is yours. Paul, I'm here. Can you see me? And hear you. Good. 
Well, members and guests, I'm going to have you try to figure out why I'm a member of Blarney. I'm going to run through a series of happenings and we'll see if we can decide what circumstances led me to be talking here today. A year ago, I was an old man walking around our local library, lost and with nothing to do and came upon a flyer that was bent and faded, peeking out on a bulletin board late in the afternoon. I picked it up, said something about Toastmasters. I read it. I noted that the meeting was take, going to take place within a few feet of here in a room that I could see with my eyes. Why not? I said. So I walked into that room, looked around, and turned around and left. I got two or three steps out, and I said, why not? I went back into that room, continued to attend meetings for a few months, and then a strange thing happened. I got an email that said, we invite you to give a test speech for an evaluation contest in a district Congress or district conference. Now, I was new. I had no idea what a test speech was. I had no idea what an evaluation was. I had no idea what an evaluation contest was. I had no idea what districts and how things were divided up. I thought about it. After initially rejecting it, I said, guess what? Why not? So I went to that meeting, gave that speech, and lo and behold, I got a standing ovation. I said, this isn't so bad. Maybe I'll look more and more into this Toastmaster stuff. At that same meeting, I went to a breakout session by a world champion who challenged us in the next week, investigate a club in another country. Here's where Paul did take my, <laughs> my, my uh, my message a little bit. I looked up, found Blarney, contact, Paul was back. Two weeks later, I was on a, a Zoom call doing a icebreaker, made a bold promise that I'll be there. And he announced shortly thereafter, in two weeks, there was going to be an in-person meeting. Now, here's where my dad comes in. He said, son, you make a promise. You keep it. Two weeks later, I was in Blarney, meeting these wonderful people, being made welcome. For some preposterous reason, being given the job of grammarian in that meeting. Think about that. I'll get back to that in a minute. The meeting went wonderful. I met people. They told me that the next day they were heading over to Liverpool to the District 71 District Conference, as I recall. I got to thinking about that and said, guess what? Why not? So I got on a bus, a plane, I went to Liverpool to the conference and another preposterous occurrence. I was honored to be the grammarian in the Anglo-Irish Toastmaster face-off. Can you imagine some guy from Chicago in the seat of our mother tongue being the evaluator of grammar and creativity in Liverpool, England? Well, this progressed. I went home, attended meetings, kept going to online meetings. A few months, actually, a couple of months later, Moira called me. Moira said, hey, would you like to be on the executive committee? Now, I've always liked to be on executive committees, but it turned out that I found out that she wanted to me to be vice president of membership. Now, another preposterous occurrence to think a guy from Chicago being a membership director of an Irish, traditional Irish club. Of course, I said, why not? Now, why am I a member of Blarney Toastmaster Club? I'm gonna to give you some reasons. 
One, I love these people. I really do. I feel really close to them. And I know them because I visited them. We're in their homes and talk face to face with them. Two, there are powerhouses, giants in Toastmaster, on the Toastmaster scene in Europe and around the world that have knowledge experience. Three or of part one is they do things right here at Blarney Club. And I have always loved being around people, smart people doing things right. There's opportunity to participate. There's 16 to 18 jobs every time. People participate. I see them getting better all the time. There are mentors. Paul Omani is my mentor. He's Dave Craig's mentor. Lillian mentored Dana. Moira mentored Lillian that taught us and brought us along. There are ideas and stories that take flight here. I heard Tim Sheehan talk about his pub. I went there to visit. Dave Craig proposed that we get rid of Blarney. That is goodwill flattery at the beginning of evaluations. Jill Talmer is going to talk tonight about updating the titles for uh, our, our, our roles. I, I was told 24 hours ago that I was going to give a speech and I used the things that I learned from Irish talkers from Moira, Paul, and the other things about how to get a speech going quick and get it refined. People are welcomed, they are valued, and they are celebrated, as you can see here tonight. So can you imagine, is there any doubt of why I am a Blarney Toastmaster member? The way I see it, if a bunch of why nots are combined with a bunch of preposterous opportunity, that equals destiny. It is my destiny to be here. And I have one more question before I sign off. It's my destiny to be here. Is it your destiny to be part of Blarney? Paul Omani, meeting leader. Well, all I can say to you, Bill Hayden, is that you very, very quickly learned the skills of being a vice president membership. Uh, you will be, uh, I hope, by the way, to tell everybody, uh, the club is open for receiving new members. Bill Hayden has just told you. There you are. You are all invited to join. Every one of you. And I'll leave that to Bill now. Fantastic. Have a minute to give Bill some feedback, please, on his speech. And while that's happening, I want to give special welcome to Joe Kavanagh. Joe, I don't know, you got your screen turned off, but I think it's really, really fortunate this evening that we should have a very important political representative in our city. Joe, can you unmute and say hello? And as I tell people that you have been the Lord Mayor of Cork City, could you just say a word or two? Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly, Bill. Oh, Joe, perfectly. Thank you very much. And uh, listen, thank you for the lovely um, uh, words. And thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you to Lillian for inviting me to, to this evening's meeting. I've been listening with interest. And to be honest, I've been blown away by the speakers. Um, I remember many, many, many years ago um, when I was a young fellow. Well, I suppose it wasn't that long ago, but I'd like to convince myself of that anyway. And uh, when I was in primary school, my mother used to frog march me up to the local fish. And it's a verse speaking, um, an annual verse speaking competition in Cork City. Anybody from Cork would know of it. And for three or four years, religiously frog marched up to fish Matthew. And I always remember my vivid memory of it was standing on a stage and the only thing you could see 
was the blinding light in your eyes and the adjudicator's face in the middle of the hall. And I remember when I became Lord Mayor, uh, there was one event in City Hall and I had to, uh, I think it was during the Choral Festival, and I had to go up onto the stage and officially open the Choral Festival, which is an annual event in Cork. And um, when I stood on the stage, I had an immediate flashback. I had these blinding lights shining in my eyes. I could just see a couple of German singers, and by the way, welcome to our German speakers tonight, in the front row, and... They looked at me and I looked at them and I said, you know something, this reminds me of something that happened to me about 30 years ago. And I recounted my experience in the fish. And my mother at the time told me someday this will pay off. And I said, this must be the, the payoff standing on the stage in front of these people. But look, um, I, I just want to congratulate you, uh, Blarney Toastmasters, on, on 1000 meetings. Uh, it's an incredible achievement. And if my maths, and I was never good at maths, if my maths are correct, you're not too far off your 50th anniversary. And uh, so that'll be a big celebration in itself. Um, during my term as Lord Mayor, and I won't keep you long, during my term as Lord Mayor, uh, June 2020 to 2021, uh, right in the thick of COVID. So again, um, I suppose I was called the COVID Lord Mayor at the time. And um, But look, you just, like everybody else in the world, you just had to reinvent yourself and reinvent the role of Lord Mayor, but reinvent yourself as a person and do things differently to suit the difficult circumstances that we all found ourselves in. And uh, it was a very interesting and challenging year. And um, I just like to say before I finish, um, it's wonderful to see our friends from Cologne and uh, San Francisco, because we are Cork City is twinned with Cologne. And Cork City is also twinned with San Francisco uh, as a city. So uh, we have very close connections with uh, both Cologne and San Francisco, amongst other cities. And we're always reaching out as um, the second city. We do like to call ourselves the real capital in Cork. Um, but we, we are always reaching out as a city. And how better to reach out and through such a wonderful organization as Toastmasters. So congratulations on this evening's meeting. Um, the speakers that I've listened to so far um, have put me in the Tuppence Haypenny place, to be quite frank and honest with you. You're absolutely magnificent. And it's wonderful to see my, my uh, colleague, uh, Eric Downey, here as well. And uh, I know Eric well. And uh, look, it's great to see so many familiar faces and people putting their best foot forward. And uh, listen to me, it's, uh, it's a real learning uh, curve for me listening to you. So congratulations, Paul. And I won't take any more of your valuable time. So thank you again for the invite. Joe, on everyone's behalf, I'm going to say something that everybody at this meeting is thinking. Join Blarney Toastmasters in time for our 50th anniversary. And we'll be talking to you later. Bemide kind, as we say in Ireland. Joe, <laughs> you're a hero. Thank you so, so much. What a great uh, thing it is to hear you speak. Thank you very much. We're aiming to reach out into the wider community, to people who haven't heard of Toastmasters before. And you've done us a great service by coming here this evening. Thank you ever so much. Great stuff. Now, thank you. The next part of our agenda is going to be a photograph. We're going to have a few official photographs. So can I ask you all, because we have a photographer in the background, can I ask you all to look your very best at the camera with your best smile on so that we can have some screenshots. I won't tell you who the photographer is, but she's been busy at work throughout the meeting. So let's have your best smiles so that we can have, a, we'll do this several times during the meeting. And uh, so. This reminds me of waiting for my father to stop using the light meter while the whole family waited and waited. Okay, I think that's probably enough time for the photos. 
Thank you very much, everybody. Now we come to the most exciting part of the meeting. I say exciting because you all know here that there will be prepared speeches. There will not be any more prepared speeches because I'm going to bring on Charles Malone. Charles, all Thank the way from County Offaly. And Charles is going to direct impromptu speaking off the cuff. Charles, why do we do it in Toastmasters? Why do we bother with uh, what we call table topics, impromptu speaking? And then I'll let you loose. Well, the reason why I love doing it is because it makes me think on top of my head that you're, you're given no warning what topic you're going to be given. And it, I love topics. I used to hate topics when I first started, but now I've grown to love them. So uh, hopefully uh, we can celebrate our great, great achievement and I'll carry on. Uh, so I'm going to pick, who am I going to pick first? Um, uh, I see a certain call person. Out, Char Charles, call out the question first and then. Okay. Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Why do we celebrate? And they're going to pick a certain person from Bristol, UK, uh, a certain Brian Heaton. Oh, well, why Brian, do Brian, sorry, before you start, you have a one, these are one minute topics. Just oh, one sorry. minute. Yeah, so I should have said that. Forgot. Okay, that's fine. Uh, why do we celebrate? Well, um, the, the, the way to celebrate has an interesting uh, history. It really became prominent in English in the 15th century. Uh, and uh, there were two, two claims of person who celebrated. A celebrant was typically a religious minister uh, conducting a service, someone doing uh, something formal. A celebrator was a person uh, who uh, celebrated. And to celebrate is to mark something, to enjoy something, to make it memorable. And boy, has this meeting been memorable. Thank you for this lovable club. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. This is a really memorable experience and a great celebration. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian. The next topic is, uh, how should we celebrate this magnificent occasion? Dana. All the way from Germany. Uh, could you please repeat the question? I said, how should we uh, celebrate this magnificent occasion? Um, uh, good question. But to be honest, I don't think there's any better way to celebrate it than the way we are doing it now. There's no better way to celebrate a 1,000th Toastmasters meeting than having people from all over the world join people from cities who are twin to Cork, people who have visited first, um, meetings in the past, people from other clubs, people who've never heard of Toastmasters before. Isn't there any better way to celebrate 1,000 meetings as with all those people? I don't think so. Grand. Um... You fall asleep and you wake up and you, you, you suddenly discover Larney's celebrating its 1,000th year as Toastmaster. Antonio, take it from there. Mr. Table Topics Master, are you suggesting that I am going to be around in that year? Because if I am, then will you be too? 1,000 I... years. Hmm. Well, that will be 2075, and I don't think I'm going to be here. However, let's hope that there will be a 1,000 years, and that it will be strong, and there will be people just like us who will still be enjoying everything that Toastmasters has to offer, still be international, still be online, because it's the best way, isn't it? And uh, that's, that we'll be inspiring people, and talking to friends all around the world. What more can we ask for? Thank you. Let me see. Uh, what um, is your most memorable celebration? Ron Jones. Uh, 
Thank you for that wonderful question. Uh, without a doubt, it would have been the beginning of four children that I uh, am the father of. And I would tell you many times over, they all grew up at different rates, different speeds. And sometimes I like them and sometimes uh, other words might fit the blank. Other than that, uh, everybody's doing great. I'm up to 16 grandchildren now and I have four great grandchildren. I'm out of Chicago or the Chicago window, but naturally I live in a little town called Sandwich, just like what you would eat. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to have a minute here on the meeting. This has been a very nice awarding meeting. And I have to say a courtesy of William Hayden happened to put me onto your meeting and possibly I'll come back and uh, join you again. Thank you for the time, sir. No, no problem. Uh, my next question is, uh, what do you know about Blarney? Uh, Matthew from San Francisco, I'm not sure how you pronounce your surname. Thank you so much, Table Topics Master. It's pronounced tall, like Paul with a T. Blarney, I do not know too much about Blarney. I am aware of the Blarney Stone and the tourist uh, intention to uh, visit the site and kiss the stone. Uh, short of that, I, I am not too familiar with Blarney and and the the region of Ireland that it is found in. So this has been a rewarding experience to listen in, to hear the Lord Mayor speak earlier, to to hear all of the history that uh, the, the folks in your community can bring to the table. This has been such a fantastic meeting and a great idea to reach out in the way that you did. Thank you so much for inviting us. So uh, this has been a magnificent occasion so far. What would you add to this occasion? Linda. Mr. Topics Master, first and foremost, congratulations to Brarley. And what would, would I bring to it? Well, obviously, all I can say is at the end of it, maybe we'd all go to our cupboards, our fridges, <laughs> and pour ourselves a glass of wine or Prosecco or something and have a toast to Blarney because it's a wonderful achievement. And I think, uh, like the previous speaker from San Francisco said, I remember the visiting Blarney on numerous occasions, but the Blarney Stone and Blarney Castle are my two outstanding memories of it. And of course, visiting Blarney Toastmasters. But I think that it's an achievement in this day and age where clubs are struggling to maintain uh, members to have a record of 48 years currently uh, is just a wonderful, wonderful um, time. And of course, 1975 was the birth of my son. So I always remember the anniversary of Blarney. So to everybody later on, we shall go to our fridges and pour ourselves a glass of wine to Blarney. Thank you, Linda. Uh, every culture celebrates things differently. So, Jim Plunkett, how did he celebrate things in Peru? Well, you know, they don't even know where Blarney is, so I got out of there today because of Paul. Paul invited me and I said, Blarney, I've got to go to Blarney again. This is my second visit to Blarney. I was here about, I don't know, maybe 25 years ago. And my dream was to kiss the Blarney stone. So when I went over there, they looked at me and said, we'd love to accommodate you, but you're too heavy. You weigh too much. And we can't hold you over the list. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, that's terrible. Well, I've lost about three kilos since that visit. So I'm really dreaming about going back and celebrating again. And this time I'll be visiting the Toastmasters Club because this has really been a celebration for me. I'll tell you, I am thrilled to death and I wanna see you all in Lima eventually because we have a club that's about to celebrate 60 years. And I've been a pretty good part of that one. So you're all welcome. And if you're golfers, bring your clubs like Toastmasters for Golf that we have in Ireland now. And the president is here to be with us today. So uh, it's a wonderful 
opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Topic Leader. Yeah. Um, Charles, sorry to interrupt. Would you mind making this the last uh, topic? Please. Okay, this, this, this last topic. Uh, when you think the word celebration, what do you think? I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Shall we chase it? Hi, thank you. I'm also from San Francisco. I'm in the same club as Matthew Tall, who just spoke. When I think of celebration, I think of being with a group of people who are all supporting the same cause and are getting to enjoy all the work they have put into whatever cause it is and getting to feel that elevated atmosphere with the people who you've worked so hard with. And I think that 1,000 meetings is a great reason for celebration. Well, uh, thank you for that. And at that, I will hand the gavel back to our postmaster and president, Paul. Well, Charles Malone, I am the past president, uh, by oh, the way. I, 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 sorry, I, I got, I, I got carried away there. Oh. We're now going to have a five minute break. So a comfort break for five minutes. However, in Blarney, we do not turn off our screens unless you're going to be away and we don't go silent. And during the break, those of you who are still, uh, by all means, slip, slip away for whatever you like. But I want to chat with those of you who are going to leave your screens on. Be just almost like another little bit of topic. So five minute break. Timer, if you can give us a shout in five minutes, I'd be very grateful. You're good, you survive, you flourish and you grow. And that is the best proof of the pudding. Uh, thank you, George. Thank you very much. Now, what about, where's Hannah Schmidt? Hannah, Hannah, how are you feeling? Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, Paul, for the invitation. I think this is an awesome club with about 65 members or visitors attending from all over the world. Congratulations on your thousand um, meetings and good luck for the next thousand. Over to you. And we'll see you in Canada again, Paul. Oh, wouldn't I love it? Wouldn't I love it? Great stuff. Now, let me go to Christian also from... Uh, Oh, no, Christian, you have a role, so I'll come back to you later on. You'll get a chance to speak later. So let me just see who else is here who hasn't, uh, who isn't on the uh, on the agenda yet. Uh, Mario, Mario, Mario. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, finally uh, made it to the meeting. Um, was just having dinner this entire time, so I was only listening and... Um, nice to be back and nice to see all some familiar faces and definitely I'll be seeing you on Sunday as well for another club's meeting. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Mario. Let me go. Beverly Wise from uh, uh, Excalibur in the UK. Beverly, give us a few words, please. How's it going for you? Oh, Paul, I am so impressed with what's going on here today. The uh, the enthusiasm, the breadth of coverage, the people you've invited. Clearly, we need you over at our club here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to thing that you do as well. Uh, Excalibur is wonderful, as you know, and we have good people. But to see the star-studded group of people, luminaries you've assembled here today is really stunning. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, Samuel Dye, yes, can Paul, you give us a... We have five minutes, Paul. Okay, last person, Samuel Dye. How is it for you so far? Oh, you have to unmute. Can you unmute, Samuel? Okay, I'll unmute you. Off you go. It's a privilege to be. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Mm. <laughs> it's a privilege to be here and to uh, witness this celebratory uh, event. And uh, so I'm, I'm sitting here in New Mexico in awe. 
Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure, Samuel. Thank you very much. And special thanks to our timer, Wukash, for uh, alerting us to the beginning of the next part of the meeting. Actually, I must say to everybody, because I'm one of these people who loves that we should finish on the scheduled time, but I'm going to crave your forbearance and say that the meeting isn't going to finish in, uh, in 40 minutes. It'll finish a little bit later than that, because uh, th that's because it's so good and uh, so, so brilliant to have you all here. Now, I, we're going to start the next part by inviting Danny Banks. Now, I want to tell you that Danny Banks is one of the nicest people that I have met in Toastmasters. He has had a career of teaching pupils, and I can tell you none of the teachers I had at school were half as nice as Danny Banks. So, Danny, you are the Program Quality Director. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is one of the main, we'll call it the main board of Toastmasters in Ireland, Scotland, huge chunk of England, more or less everything north of London and uh, Wales, uh, a little bit of Wales. Danny, would you please give us a speech on behalf of the district leadership team? And your speech is called, We, We, Support Blarney Toastmasters. Danny Banks, please welcome Danny Banks. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Hello, Toastmasters, and welcome guests. I wish my mum had been here to hear that, Paul. Thank you. That was a very nice introduction. And I'd like to celebrate with you and congratulate Blarney on a thousand meetings. Nearly, was it 48 years? 48 years? of service to the community. So I began to think, well, why are they so successful? Why have they been going so long? So I started to do some research and I found out that Blarney, the town, it, the village is about 3000 people. Now I know that you serve a wider area and now you're online, you serve the world, but originally Blarney, a little a village. Now I live in the English Midlands. I live between Coventry, which I understand is one of your twin uh, towns of Cork, and Leicester. And I live in a village. Now my village is 15,000. It's one of the biggest villages in, in, in England. It's, you know, we have villages that go up to 18,000. And I wouldn't start a Toastmasters club here because I just don't think it would get off the ground. So what is it about, um, about Blarney, the small village in, in, in Ireland that has made it so successful, that it's made it last so long, that it's a thousand meetings. And I think I've discovered the secret to your success. And I believe it's the Blarney Stone. <laughs> I think what you do is make sure that anybody who wishes to apply has actually kissed the Blarney Stone <laughs> and been blessed with the gift of the gab, has been blessed with the ability to, to, to speak without stopping. So I think that's a success to your club. But I think that's only a byproduct. The success to your club, like it is to every club, are the people who give up their time week in, week out to run the club, the presidents, the committee. It's people like that going right back to 1975. All those people you've got to thank who have given up their time, the founders of your club, the people who run it now. That's what makes the club successful. And, and it's a model that we can all share. So whilst you might have the advantage of the Blarney Stone, it's the, it's the dedication and work of you, your committee, and those that have gone before you. You're building on giants, as we say. So thank you for the opportunity of speaking to you tonight. And here's to the next thousand meetings, Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, Danny is wonderful. What a lovely, warm message. And thank you so much 
for actually figuring out the success of Blarney. Absolutely. I keep telling people that you can't win the world speech championship from this part of the world unless you've kissed the Blarney stone. So there we are. There we are. So the next um, person who's going to speak is a visitor. And I particularly wanted to bring a Scottish voice into the proceedings. It's really important, apart from the fact that I love Scotland, but also Anne Fellow has collaborated with me on many, many things. And it is a great pleasure to welcome all the way from Inverness, Anne Fellow. Now, Anne's speech is going to be evaluated by Christian Koenig. So Christian, will you please introduce Anne's speech? By unmuting yourself. Ah, uh, I'll unmute you. Don't worry. Off you go. Off you go. Anne has informed me that she will change this, the topic. And uh, <laughs> she has decided to, um, to present something that is telling um, us about her connection with the audience. Thank you, Christian. Thank you very much. Anne Fallow, immediate past division director for the whole of Scotland. She is the only division director that I know who has a whole country, <laughs> a whole country. My goodness. So Anne Fallow, over to you. For a five to set, for a four minute speech and fellow. Mr. Toastmaster, thank you so much. Uh, fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests and particularly members of the Blarney Club. I am so honored to be here to celebrate with you 1000 meetings. And I have a particular honor in that I'm able to deliver the congratulations of the two most geographically distant clubs on the Toastmasters map, Inverness in the North Highlands of Scotland and Ouch, which is uh, an online club, but which is domiciled in the South Island of New Zealand. So if that doesn't put the international in Toastmasters, I don't know what does. Our wonderful Toastmaster tonight is perhaps the epitome of the Blarney. Flattery, skillful flattery or nonsense. And that word supposedly came into use after an incident involving the head of the McCarthy family and Queen Elizabeth I. And Queen Elizabeth sent her envoy, the Earl of Leicester, to seize Blarney Castle. But the talkative McCarthy managed to keep stalling him. And those of you who've had dealings with Mr. Romani will understand that skill of the Blarney. Danny Banks and, and Matthew and various other members tonight have made mention of kissing the Blarney stone, that maybe that's the secret to the longevity of Blarney Toastmasters. Well, now, Far be it from me to detract from this wonderful Irish legend, but I do feel that it's only fair to point out that the magical properties of that famous stone may well have be, been bequeathed to you all from Scotland. There is a legend that suggests that the Blarney Stone is related to the Stone of Schoon, the Stone of Destiny, which is used for the crowning of monarchs in Scotland and England. There's another legend that suggests, in fact, it was a gift from Robert the Bruce to another McCarthy, an earlier McCarthy, Cormac McCarthy, King of Munster. And Robert the Bruce wanted to thank him for sending men to help Bruce defeat the English at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. And we Scots are always delighted to have any help in defeating the English. <laughs> Doesn't happen terribly often. 
But whatever the magic behind the stone, whatever the history of the Blarney, and whatever the mysterious source of the eloquence of the Irish, Blarney Toastmasters has served its community since 1975, upholding and extolling the principles of Toastmasters International, respect, integrity, service, and excellent. It's honed the communication skills of hundreds of members at 1,000 meetings. That's more than 3,000 speeches. Probably eight or 9,000 table topic answers. And at least 350 assorted club officers who have contributed to the success of the club, District 71, and Toastmasters International as a whole. And that is something that is well worth celebrating and shouting about all around the world. So I would say that we have reached that point that Linda was talking about earlier. And it is time to drink a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, the toast is Blarney Toastmasters. Long may they flourish. Slanchava. Did you notice that bit of Gaelic? <laughs> Did you notice that bit of Gaelic there, guys? Uh, and fellow, you're fantastic. You're fantastic. You deserve massive applause. Ma Look, please give and fellow a bit of uh, uh, feedback in the chat. I'm got a, before I introduce a very important person, I'm now going to read you some congratulations that have come in. Congratulate from Mullingar Toastmasters, Pauline McCabe, who is here or was here and is incredibly welcome and is a fabulous Toastmaster. Congratulations on reaching an incredible milestone, 1,000 meetings, thousands of speeches and evaluations, thousands of laughs. Have any of you laughed this evening? We'll add that to the score. Hundreds of members' lives impacted. Enjoy the well-deserved recognition. Party on. Pauline McCabe, thank you so much. Now, all the way from a president's distinguished district on the far side of the world from Indonesia, Zilva Boas, the immediate past uh, district director. Happiest 1,000 meetings, Blarney Toastmasters. Keep growing and inspiring. Hope we can have a joint meeting. Will the president please make a note of that? Hope we can have a joint meeting in the future. Warmest regards, one country, one world. She's president of that. Now, the vice president membership of a really strong club in District 71 is called, the club is called Godiva Speakers. And she is Mia Shin. Congratulations on the 1000th meeting. What well, that's a great milestone indeed. Thank you for the invitation. However, I would like to apologize that unfortunately we won't be able to attend due to the time coinciding with our arranged meeting. And many of our members are currently on holidays. Once again, on behalf of Godiva Speakers to congratulate Blarney Club on this marvelous milestone. One more to one of our members who at the moment, from one of our members who at the moment is unable to be active, Simone Vorster. My love to Blarney Toastmasters Club and all our members. Isn't that lovely? Now the next hero of the evening, Ted Cochran, for some of you doesn't need any introduction, but it's absolutely certain that some of you here have almost certainly never met Ted Cochran. I tell you that this man started his life off down in Kerry, working on the railways. I won't do the whole biography, but imagine a guy from Kerry in Ireland, working on the railways, a health and safety guy, ends up international president of Toastmasters and one of the most influential 
and best loved past international presidents. Every club I meet in the world has got Ted as an honorary member. I don't know how he pulls it off, but he is a he is a what we would call an earned a dote. Um, Ted Corcoran, welcome to Blarney. And please, your speech is to be in praise of Blarney Toastmasters. Please, all of you, welcome. Ted Corcoran. Mr. Toastmaster Paul, thank you for the invitation. I'm absolutely delighted to be here tonight. But 1975 has a different significance for me because the Kerry football team beat the Dubs back in 1975. And I still, I still dine out on that. But what an achievement to have a thousand meetings under your belt. And Anne mentioned it there, the number of speeches, the number of evaluations, the number of topics, the number of everything. How many committee meetings were held? How many challenges were faced and, 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 and overcome? It's truly a, a description of a club that has a very strong success culture. And that's what I'd like to talk about and take a few things and just ask the question because I can, I can be assured that the answer to the question is that the Blarney Club has satisfied every one of them. So what is a success culture? What is culture? Well, there's many definitions of culture, but the one I came across that I liked the best, because as you said, I was the head of safety for Irish Railways for 10 years before I retired. The simplest one was the way we do things around here. The way we do things around here. So you can have a very successful culture or a very bad culture or no culture because it describes the way we do things around here. And you've obviously done them so well that you have a truly success culture. And I just take five examples. Number one is, are there clear goals, a vision and a strategy? Well, no club like Blarney can be as successful as you have been without having a vision and a strategy and clear goals and that everybody buys into. That is the start of everything, and you have that in spades. Number two, is there a focus on member success and well-being? Obviously, because your success rate is astonishing and astounding. And looking at the meeting tonight, all the people that are on the program, all volunteering to be on it, certainly there's a focus on member success. Because if there isn't, the members, you know, they dwindle away, they leave because they're not getting the, the, the attention that they deserve. Number three is, are the results and achievements in the club recognized and celebrated at every opportunity? And they are, and I know that a year ago, you phoned me or texted me and said, because I had mentioned that a letter had gone out from Toastmasters International on the 22nd of August, congratulating every distinguished club in the world, and your club didn't seem to have received it. So I got on to my contacts in Toastmasters International and you very quickly got the email. But you got another one just now, the other, the other day, because you're the past president. And I love the idea that you actually sent it to every club member and copy them so they all can read this email, which is congratulating the club and particularly its officers for achieving present distinguished in your case. Number four, is there an inclusive team environment? There has to be because the thing doesn't work if there isn't an, an inclusive team environment. And that means that people feel involved, they feel part of the team, they feel part of the success, they feel, they feel part of what goes on. And that definitely is a success culture. And number five, these teams and individuals are empowered to deliver results. Yes, empowered. They don't have to uh, plead, they don't have to beg. They're empowered. Yes, I'd like to do a pathway next year and they get on the program and people look after them. So you have the very definition of culture, the way we do things around here. Now, not many people know this, but I spoke at the Blarney Club in 1987. I had just turned 18, which of course is a big lie for those of you, for those of you who know me. And I had qualified for the first version of the British and Irish humor speech contest. Because prior to 87, we had a British contest and an Irish contest, and then they met somewhere in the middle and they had a, a final contest. So I appeared on in Blarney in the autumn of 1987. 
and I appeared in the district final. And due to the very poor quality of the judges in Blarney, I didn't figure in the top three. <laughs> but you know what I did? I decided I'm going to win this thing if it kills me. And I won it the following year in 1988. I was asked the morning afterwards to be the area governor. And that set me on my road to the top of international president, which 20 years ago this month, I took on the role of international president. Still, in the 99 years, the only European to have done so. So I'm very famous. Well, I'm not, because I'm going to finish with a story that proves that you can never, <laughs> you, can, you, can never you can never account for people's lack of knowledge. So I was at a regional conference somewhere in, somewhere in New York State. I won't tell you where exactly. And we were um, training the district officers on the Friday and the Saturday. So we got together on Thursday evening for a little chinwag get to know you and I went into this room and was talked to a few people and I saw a man and a woman standing in the middle of the room alone oh I said I better meet her and the president so over I went I said hello I'm Ted he said I'm I won't give his name and this is my wife Margaret and then he said the most extraordinary thing he says and and where do you come from oh I said I'm from the Maritimes which it was a lie because the Maritimes are, you know, not East America, but Ireland is a maritime country. So only the S was a fib, right? He said, are you a district governor? No, I said, I'm not. He said, are you the number two, the, the education person? I said, no, I'm not. He says, are you the marketing? I said, certainly not. And you're digging a very big hole for yourself. He said, are you a division director? I said, no. He said, are you an area director? I said, no. He says, are you a club president? I said, I certainly am not. And then he stopped because he'd gone down from the top to the bottom and his wife piped up. I bet you, she said, he's not even a Toastmaster. <laughs> so, so here I am in the middle of New York State, the president of this gigantic worldwide organization. And two people <laughs> had no idea who I was. It's very humbling with a lesson for all of us. Don't take yourself too seriously. Congratulations on the thousand meetings. I hope to be around for the second thousand. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Ted, that's a joy to hear you speak. And you're such a great storyteller. And for those of you who don't know, Ted has a couple of books. You can look them up and they're full of stories. In fact, he has more than two books. He's got a book full of stories and he's also written the history of District uh, 71. Um, right. Okay. I haven't got time to give you the full thing, but uh, you can Google it and find it. Now, I want to introduce you to our general evaluator who will take over from me and who will be in charge effectively of the rest of the meeting. Now, our general evaluator walked into her first club meeting in 2007 and she joined on the spot that same evening, exactly what I did. Since then, she's been active in two dozen, two dozen San Francisco and New York clubs over the years, including several that she founded. And she served as an area director, a division director, a pathways guide, that's an educational guide. And she's on the District 46 hybridization committee i don't know what that is they're probably gardeners um she's currently an officer in five clubs her proudest achievement jill tolmer's proudest achievement is convincing all of her five clubs to stop using the loaded terms toastmaster and sergeant at arms and adopt instead the neutral terms meeting leader host and greeter logistics so as your meeting leader i would like you to please put your hands together for jill tolmer jill you are our general evaluator the team is yours thank you thank you so much paul and i want to start out by asking our speech evaluators so who was our first speech evaluator? And how much time, does the timer know how much time everybody gets? 
Yes, I can tell you that the first speech evaluator who's going to evaluate today is uh, Andy Regi, and he has uh, between uh, two and three minutes to evaluate the speech by Moira O'Brien. Andy. Okay, just, just want to clarify, yes, I'm in District 46 in New York and District 4 in San Francisco. Please, Andy, take it away. Thank you so much. So if you need some money, just go to buy some at the bank. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Moira. And, and thank you all fellow Toastmasters for, well, I, I found really Moira's speech extremely humorous, entertaining, and also inspiring. And it was really plenty of great jokes. And something I think Moira did very well was especially the characterization of uh, the, the characters. <laughs> and for example, when I really loved the character of Lena, when uh, she had three pair of glasses and that was so much fun for me. And I found also that it was very original and it was great how she described this uh, uh, this Lena, this 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 person, like as many others, and something she did very well, and that's why I could see there was a lot of laughter in the audience, is the use how she was delivering the jokes, the poses she was using, and in the pace, and I think the 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 timing, which is something really key in a humorous speech was just perfect. I think Moira was really brave when she asked us to unmute ourselves. And I know, in, as a, you know if you're a comedian, if you are into humorous speaking, definitely is really important to see the reaction of the audience. But at the same time, I really would like, I, I would like to have her any single word, any single jokes of what Moira was saying. And the problem of Zoom is that as somebody laughs, all of a sudden you don't hear anymore the speaker. So I was thinking a possible solution working in this, uh, in this kind of, uh, in this online setting, it could be maybe wait for people and laughing and then we start. And, but I thought that that was really, really brilliant. Something else, I think I love that, uh, uh, that Moira standing up so we could really see her movement, her body language, her hand gesture. Something she could have improved, I think it was the eye contact. As when we, we face um, a, a laptop, we are tempted to look at the audience and look at the um, at the faces of people, their reactions again. But the way we establish high contact and engagement is by looking at the at the at the camera. So this could be something to challenge yourself for the next time. Try to look at the camera. But overall, I thought it was really a great speech, very interactive, uh, really funny and inspiring and, and a lot. And my personal takeaway is uh, that sometimes it's very nice, you know, to uh, become, again, children. Back to you, Madame General Echo. Thank you. Andy, that was beautiful. I'm going to ask anybody who, who speaks in this section, please not to call me madam, just call me Jill. Thanks. Who is our second evaluator? Our second evaluator is uh, Ed O'Sullivan, who is going to evaluate Bill Hayden's speech, why I joined Blarney Toastmasters. Oh, Ed, take it away. Thank you, Jill. Well, Bill, it was my pleasure to evaluate your speech this evening. As described earlier, more than once, you did what may be unparalleled in Toastmasters. I'm not sure. 
by turning up at a face-to-face -face meeting here in Blarney at such short notice, all the way from Chicago. It, 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 you must be a little bit mad. <laughs> at that meeting, I had the pleasure of meeting you myself. So I'm, I'm delighted with that. Bill, you gave us a great introduction. Right from the get-go, you captured our attention the way you painted the picture of how you stumbled across Toastmasters in the first place. The fact that it turned out to be just down the street was maybe a coincidence, but maybe fate. But certainly the curi your curiosity got the better of you and you couldn't resist. You certainly must have embraced it as you took on a challenge at your very first meeting. Not surprisingly, you got a standing ovation when you were finished your speech. Now, very interesting for me, I didn't know the story behind how you and Paul here managed to connect in the first place, or how Paul managed to snare you into committing to the face-to-face, -face. but that is a very cool story. You gave us a great insight into what a good character you are by standing by your word when you, when you had said that you would go to the next Blarney face-to-face -face meeting and actually showing up exactly the way your father encouraged you to be. I thought it was also very warm the way you described your interaction with the with us or the members here in Blarney. The way it was described, it, it certainly feels like you, like you meant it, it had true feeling. Now, I'm almost certain that there was no use of any filler words throughout your speech. And Roman, I know you're keeping track, so apologies if I have if I've missed one. But I thought you spoke very clearly throughout and you kept us very much engaged. Now, some, this, this sounds like I'm after copying, but it's something that I would suggest as well is to maybe look at the camera a little bit more often. We're, we're perhaps all guilty of that when we're on Zoom or Teams calls, not actually looking at the camera lens, but I think it's, um, it's something that we should all do a little bit more, certainly myself, as I said. Overall, I think you delivered the speech very well and it certainly achieved its purpose. You are a true gent and I can speak for all the members here in Blarney. We're looking forward to having you back in the flesh as soon as possible. Back to you, Jill. Thank you so much. And both evaluators are reminding me not to look right in my iPad, but to look over here at this hole in my iPad. Does it look now as though I'm looking at you? Yes. I'm looking at a hole. Who's our third evaluator, please, Paul? Our third evaluator is Christian Koenig. Christian is going to evaluate um, Anne Fallows. Oh, Christian, please. I have the task to deliver a speech for celebration, and that had a context in connecting with the audience. Now, how do you connect with the audience? You present something that everyone has in common, something that is shared. What is shared? You have facts, emotions, humor, and even enemies, and I'll come to that in particular. Your speech was very structured, and this is something that is important for the audience to connect with so that everyone can follow what you are presenting. You have achieved that goal to my pleasure. Your posture and voice was clear, and you did also very well in that point. I duly noticed that you are an experienced speaker. How in particular did you connect with the audience? You presented facts, historic events, or people or persons that have something in common. I learned about the Blarney Stone that is a duty to kiss, which was something strange to me. I prefer people. And you also pointed out the interdependence of geographic particularities and something that is in common between 
Scottish people and the um, and 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 the Irish, which share that they are happy in defeating the English. <laughs> that made me laugh, and I enjoyed that very much. You had some outstanding aspects of or positive aspects um, that that are shared. That are the sheer numbers, the numbers of speeches, the numbers of officers, and that also came to the point that was very precise and concise. You finished your speech with a toast, which is the, the right place to, to do it. And you also joined the Irish Toastmasters with the Irish Toast Sloinche. All in all, that was a so really a perfect speech that I enjoyed very much. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to having the opportunity to listen to you the next time. Thank you so much, Kristen. Paul, should I now call on our counter and timer, or do they speak a little later? Uh, yes, the uh, the timer has put timings in the chat, so a very short report from timer, the R counter. Um, you don't need to call on any grammarian because Paul has... Um, I forgot to take my time. Did anyone stop it? It's, it's okay. The timer will uh, report on that. Okay, First. so so timer, let's just hear any findings of note. I believe the timer left. Aha. Well, then okay. we'll, we'll move on. That is perfect. Roman, were you the odd counter from San Francisco, from your, <laughs> from, from your background? Uh, uh, actually, from Wexford Island. Um, so I, I will try to be very concise. Uh, I listened to all the speakers very carefully during the meeting, and I have to report that the language of our speakers was very clear today, without overused pulse filler words and sounds. So we have another one reason to celebrate today. Congratulations, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Uh, Jill, Jill, before yeah. you say it, you are indeed Jill. Yes. Yeah. Now, just uh, I want to read into the record a very short uh, before you to give you a time to draw breath before you give the general evaluation. I want to read some, uh, some more of these phenomenal messages that have come in. Um, le let's do the international ones. Uh, Torsten Lenk. Public Relations Manager for Districts uh, 21 in Canada. What an amazing club. Greetings to all dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My name is Torsten Link. I am the PR manager for the district in Canada. Congratulations, a 48 year old club and becoming a president's distinguished club, the only one in your area. What a marvelous legacy and accomplishment. It is something to be proud of. When I look at your dashboard, I see my own club in it. We also needed one more level two speech to get 10 distinguished club uh, goal, uh, distinguished club program goals and just made it to 20 members. Nothing happens by chance. I raise my glass to the leaders and members who built this successful club. Cheers. Thank you, Canada. Thank you, Torsten. Now, quickly, let me get a couple of others in. I want to get one from Bonaire. Hands up, all of you who know where Bonaire is. Hands up, all who know where Bonaire is. Yes, right. You're all recorded for history. Bonaire, congratulations to you and the rest of my Blarney Toastmasters family. Malcolm Wilson, Bonaire from District 81 in the Caribbean. Fantastic little island. Now, let's go to Ireland. Malahide, 
The Vice President of Public Relations, Colm Ryan, says, please pass on my congratulations to your club this evening from the committee of Toastmasters Malahide. Wonderful achievement and still going strong. Thank you very, very much, Malahide. Uh, my great friend and the person who invented a smile is a weapon of mass seduction. Did you catch that? A smile is a, a weapon of mass seduction. Sean Dewan, it's remarkable. He's the president of Nina Toastmasters in Ireland. It's remarkable that Blarney are having its 1000 meeting this evening, having started the club in 1975. Imagine for a minute how many people have benefited, benefited from way from education in the areas of, he mentions four of them, speaking skills, leadership skills, listening skills, persuasive skills, and many more over that period of time. Think also of all the people we are now friends with and the social enjoyment that is part of that. This is worth celebrating. I want to be part of this unusual achievement on Tuesday evening, Sean Duan. And uh, I think my final one here is from Tim Leash, who is uh, from a club that is aiming to charter very soon in District 71 called Wordsmiths Online. It's unlikely I'll be able to join you this evening, to my great regret. I hope it's a successful and memorable evening. Do keep me in mind for the 2000 meeting. At that point, I'm going to stop and hand on to Jill for the General Evaluators Report. Jill, over to you. Thank you so much, Paul. I will strive to bring this in in five minutes. Everybody okay with that? If you're not, just go. <laughs> it's okay, we'll still have a lot of people here. I want to explain really quickly about this meeting leader versus Toastmaster business. I've been around this program for 16 years and long ago, I thought, I don't, I'm not anybody's master and I'm not calling anybody master. And it's been really hard selling that idea, but I feel that titles like Mr. and Madam that are formal, which I never use anywhere and I never hear anywhere except in these meetings and maybe in doctor's offices. The formality maintains a certain social structure and I, I don't, and the gendering, I'm not, I, I'm not a, a, I don't consider myself a lady and I don't like it when say ladies and gentlemen. And so it's really just to please me, but I have a feeling that it would please a lot of people and bring in a lot of young people if we did away with these gendered terms and came up with the better ones. And Sergeant at Arms, it's just, I'm not, I'm not a military man with, with guns and and I'm not, it, it, we can't survive unless we change and we can't change unless we survive. And I think this program has dwindled to some extent. I know it has in New York. And I'd love to see it make some healthy changes in the direction of being more inclusive. That's that spiel. Now as to this meeting, all I can say as Christian said, to be precise and concise is that my heart is full, my head is full, my ears are full. I feel so nourished by everybody here and everything you said and everything you showed in your faces. Andy, I would have loved that evaluation even if there was no audio on because your face was just so we love you and you're great, which is a message I think all evaluators should give. We love you, you're great. And then of course, what Lillian said, and here's how it could be even better. I love that Ed said, Bill, we wanna see you back in the flesh soon. I mean, just AI for whatever its benefits can't come up with the kind of language and feeling that we have here. It just can't do it. I prefer kissing people, said Christian. So at a Passover Seder, there's this expression, Dayenu. It means it would have been enough. And it would have been enough 
if we just had these superb people, Lillian and Paul, chatting people up for two hours. I could have just listened to that. And it was fantastic. It would have been enough to have these three fantastic speeches with these brilliant evaluations that are as good as anything I've ever heard anywhere in the 16 years. It would have been enough just to have 65 people coming to celebrate this club and wish them well. It would have been enough to learn the history of Toastmasters and Blarney and all of that and to get these great exhortations throughout, visit other clubs, do pathways, things that were just dropped in that everybody can resonate with. I don't have much to offer you. It's like you were an evaluator for the best speech you ever heard. What do you do? What do you say? I've heard a lot of terrific speeches and what do I say? I say, take it on a bigger stage. Do more with that speech. You don't have to change a word, but tell it to more people. Take it on, have more impact with, with your skills, have more impact. For this club, you can teach the trainings. You can go teach pathways. You can help other clubs. You can visit them. You can support them. You can save them. You can found other clubs, coach them, invigorate them. You can serve in office. You can use your training to make the world a better place, a, a more loving place, a more peaceful place. You can use what you have to spread joy the way you did today and more and more. It starts with the 65 of us, but it doesn't end with the 65 of us. Everybody who was here, me foremost, is going to take away from this meeting how to uh, make a, a diamond, make a diamond. You really take the, the occasion and the moment and the day and the hour and the Zoom link and you put it all really tightly together to make this powerhouse. I've heard that word several times here, this powerhouse of joy that is this club. And the only negative thing I can say is, God damn it, I'm already in five clubs. They take a lot of time. Uh, but Blarney, Blarney, Blarney calls. Bill, it's all your fault, but I don't fault you for doing that. And uh, was it Matthew, Paul? Thank you, I'm, Tol I'm Jill Tolmer. And you said like Paul, but with a T, I always say like short, but tall, but maybe I could make it easier on myself. Anyway, I really appreciate the opportunity to be your GE today. And I learned a lot from you and I loved being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much, Jill. It's absolutely fabulous to have you here. And you know what? You're in five clubs. Well, look, anyone who's in five can be in six. So that is absolutely fantastic of you. That's brilliant. We would love to have you. I, I'm going to do the club business session for just one second before I pass over to our president for to, to close the official part of the meeting. Although, and then all of you who haven't had a chance to speak yet in the after party, we can have a good nasher. And just to tell you all that Blarney Toastmasters meets on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month at the same time that this meeting began, second and fourth Tuesday. We do during the year have a number of speakathons. These are meetings at which there might be seven, eight, nine, ten speeches with evaluators all designed to give people an opportunity to self-develop skills and get educational credit for it. So as somebody said, we are quite a serious club. Uh, we're not a club made up of stars. We're a club made up of a wonderful mixture of people. So other than telling you that our next meeting will be on the last Tuesday of this month, I uh, am going to invite our wonderful, wonderful club president, Lillian Courtney, 
to uh, say a few words to end the meeting before we move into the after party. Lillian, over to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Toastmaster. Paul, what can I say? I'm actually lost for words and that's not very often. Paul, because I definitely kissed the Blarney Stone a few times, but they say if you walk into a room and you're the most intelligent, you are never going to learn anything. And I came into this room tonight and I introduced my speech by saying that we had people of high calibre in this speaking area and district and area and so many global clubs around the world joining us tonight. But all I can say is, wow, I have definitely come into a room where I've learned so much from everybody, which is so important. And I am so grateful to be connected to all of you. And I seriously want to congratulate all the people that took roles, that, took, that spoke, everybody that sent congratulations to us. And as, and as well, Jill there, who actually ended up her general evaluation with excitement and energy to tell us all you know, what way she felt about us. And all of us here tonight, I want to end up with saying, please come back to us. Let us all join forces. And as you say, we will genuinely be here next. Well, Paul will tell you the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. And we would love you to join. We'd love to collaborate as well and uh, join forces and have a, a meeting together. And until then, I thank you so much from all of us here at Blarney Toastmasters. Thank you so much. Well, the meeting has been adjourned by our president and uh, we're now in the after party.